Hey guys, we are back with another Mythic Legions review, taking a look at another goblin, the first goblin, but not a regular goblin. So we're taking a look at something I got in the recent in-stock sale. We've got a bog goblin to look at today, a figure that frankly I've been wanting to get for a while now. So you've got him here in the standard Legions packaging, collector-friendly stuff. He's a... Uh, Sword took a little bit of a tumble in there, but you've got him in the packaging. You've got the Legion's logo down there on the bottom. Bio for this guy on the side, and then the back has the original lineup, original backer card artwork, and a little bit of a backstory for Mythos. So let's do it. Let's pull this little guy out and take a look. And here he is out of the package, our Bog Goblin figure. Definitely a familiar yet very different type of figure all at the same time. Because this guy, I mean, let's face it, he's basically just a dwarf with a really funky head on the shoulders and that's honestly a part of the draw for this guy is this crazy head that he's got up here so let's jump right in and take a look at articulation he is going to be exactly what you think he is as far as articulation goes if you're familiar with dwarves in this line of course there is a little bit different going on uh, when it comes to the head so you've got swivel at the head and i do have the pauldrons on this guy because frankly i don't know that he looks very good without them i think he really really needs them to help round out his overall just size and his girth i think it makes him look more normal than if he just had this kind of weird you know worm head coming out of the out of the armor so you've got those there and they do get in the way so you've got a little bit of swivel there the head is also two pieces so it swivels at what would be kind of like the neck almost if you want to call that like the neck where the head becomes the head and then this is the neck itself the arms go out the pauldrons are going to get in the way as usual but you know they go out you've got swivel in there as well you've got your swiveling single jointed elbow swivel forearms swivel and hinges at the wrist you've got your ball peg at the waist because this is an old 1.0 body because this is an old figure and then you've got bobble back and forth side to side all that jazz legs go out pretty much all the way more than this guy would probably be able to do it kick forward kick back you've got a thigh cut up there you've got your single rotating knee and then you've got rotation down here at the ankle as well as rocker and hinge so again he is exactly what you think he is if you've ever messed with any of these smaller mythic legions bodies the only real difference comes in when you mess with this massive but amazing looking head now i'm going to say what i normally say when it comes to legions and what i've been saying with a lot of figures lately this guy is all about the looks for me this is something that i'm just absolutely a fan of when it comes to mythic legions is their ability to take a standard body and throw a different weird head on it and make it something entirely different. I don't know how in the hell this thing has a body that's in this in this armor, but it works. So you've got this massive head that's poking out of this set of armor with a just weird, nasty, goofy looking sculpt, but I love every bit of it. And this guy is very much kind of playing up the bog goblin aspect of the, the character because all of the armor is really nasty. It's all very worn and patinaed, so there's a lot of rust all over it. And I really really like that it makes him look like something a little bit different he's not just this random thing that happens to have a nice new set of armor he has been in battle or he has been in the muck and the grime or he's pieced this together or he's killed a dwarf and taken the armor and that dwarf had seen battle there's all sorts of craziness you can come up with just because of the fact that they throw this fantastic paint finish on it so you know you've got what is for all intents and purposes kind of a standard set of armor we see this a lot with dwarves it's very runic it's very dwarven-esque in terms of its armor plating you've got a very standard torso piece going on here with a lot of the inlay design more of the chainmail that's exposed you've got the the furry loincloth here but it's all very dwarven but it also really works like at the same time you don't kind of pay attention to that when you're really drawn to this massive head and i really really love the pauldrons that they use for these these are some of my favorite pauldrons in the entire line great pitting all over it so again more battle worn detail more of that patina on there big humongous spiked pauldrons i just can't get enough of those but it's all very very detailed as usual there's nothing that's kind of left to the imagination on this guy it's all spelled out for you he is covered in paint covered in sculpted detail it's everything you expect to get from mythic legions it's just a little smaller because it's a dwarven body but then on top of that you've got again this fantastic head sculpt and of course i would be lying if i said that that wasn't the main draw for this figure it's so very unique well it was up until we saw the Aerithor wave go up for pre-order, but this guy is still quite a unique figure, despite the fact that he utilizes a lot of very, very basic and standard Dwarven-style parts. It's all about this head sculpt and this 
massive worm neck that's shooting out of this armor. Tons of sculpted detail, tons of paintwork. I mean, it's just a massive piece of plastic, really. The head on this thing is truly the main draw, just to have something slightly different that's very much one of those smaller form factor type of figures. I really love all the details on there, all the wash. He's really got a nice sheen to him, so it kind of makes it look like he's slimy almost, or like he just came out of a swamp or dare I say, a bog. So he just looks great. There's really no no other way to say it. It's a fantastic sculpt. Tons of detail, like all the muck in the ears. You've got these little spikes shooting out of his head, those really black, evil, nefarious looking eyes. It's just a great thing all the way around. There, There is no, no complaining from me when it comes to the head sculpt on this guy. Now, as far as accessories goes, this guy is kind of on the basic side, but that's par for the course when it comes to the older figures. And of course, this guy was just recently reissued, but they didn't add anything for him. So you do get the back adapters, which I'm not showing because, frankly, I, I have a mountain of them at this point. And then you've got the strap that you can throw on. Mostly his waist would be the best place for this guy. You've got a little dagger, which a lot of the weaponry really shows more of that kind of bog aspect because it's all patinaed. It's all kind of just standard gray, like your grunt type of weaponry, but it's all got a wash of kind of a rusty color on it. And then you've got one of the standard swords in the line with more of that patina rust color going on. And then of course you've got a big massive spear here, which has a ton of the paint wash really good uh, up in the spiked area on the top there. So standard stuff, but it works well for him being just sort of maybe kind of like a low level type of thing. He doesn't have anything too flashy. And you know, like I said, he probably got these off of a corpse or off of a battlefield and they've all seen some use. So yeah, there's no doubt about it. This guy is an absolute winner for me. I probably should have gotten more than one because, you know, I feel like he's more of a Legion builder outside of the fact that he definitely plays a singular role when it comes to the comic book that they released years back. He has a part to play in that, but he's a cool figure just to maybe have a few of on your shelf. He definitely utilizes that dwarf body really well to sell that he is a smaller but really fat nasty kind of goblin creature. He's definitely different from the other goblins we've gotten, but he certainly looks the part. I'm really happy with everything they did in terms of the color choices to go really, really dark on that brown with a little bit of, of vibrant blue in there. And then all that patina and rust really helps the sculpts show through and just make this guy look like he's been in battle or that this armor is really, really old. And I dig that kind of stuff when it comes to this line. Of course, the head sculpt is where it's at and they did a fantastic job. And it's just an all around cool figure. You really can't go wrong with this one. The only real negative is that he is a little hindered in articulation with those pauldrons on, but at the same time, he looks awesome and it really just makes up for it for me. So that's going to do it for this look at the Mythic Legion's Bog Goblin. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.